everyone, Miss Howard here uh, with another RPS at Home video for our eighth graders. This is for week six, day two, and we're going to be looking at supply, demand, and price today. Okay, let's get into it. Let me share my screen so we can get through today's lesson. So you can see that we titled today's lesson, Is the Price Right? Because we're going to be talking about how price changes as supply and demand changes, okay? But we'll find out that it kind of depends, right? So again, I'm Miss Howard, and Miss Green will join us later for our guided practice and quick, quick quiz. We're both teachers from Albert Hill, so go Tigers. And if you are from Albert Hill, that's okay. We're glad you're here too. So let's check in before we start. How are you doing today? Are you really ready to do this lesson? Do you need a snack or some water? Go ahead and pause the video and take care of that. Are you in a good space to be productive? Do you need to get on some headphones or something to block out any unwanted noise? Pause the video and take care of that now too. Um, and how are you mentally? Are you feeling a little bit stressed? Maybe you need to take a break. Maybe now's not the right time for this video. That's fine, do what you gotta do because we care about you. Your mental health and well-being are more important than this lesson. So take care of yourself if you need to and then join us when you're ready. If you are ready, let's go. So today, we're gonna go over our lesson goals and our word of the day. We're gonna talk about supply, demand, and price. We're gonna hear from Ms. Green for our guided practice, the quick quiz, and our mission for Thursday. And then I'll close us out with a meme of the day. You ready? Okay, let's go. So by the end of this lesson, you should be able to identify whether a scenario indicates a change in supply or demand and be able to describe what will happen to the price of that good or service in that situation, okay? I know that sounds like a lot right now, but I'm telling you this will be really easy and really fun to do once we show you how to do it. This is what you need for this lesson. You need something to write with, your notebook or a piece of paper, and of course, a brain that's ready to work out. If you don't have those things, go ahead, pause the video now, and you can pick, you can pick up where we left off as soon as you get back. Okay, let's go. So our words of the day are supply, demand, and price. And I really like this picture that I've chosen because you know it shows like two people arm wrestling, right? And that's kind of how supply and demand work. Like they kind of shift on their own and because one moves, the other moves. It's very much like an arm wrestle thing, right? And you kind of have to think about price as being like the point of who's winning or who's losing. That's kind of what price is. Maybe keep that metaphor in mind if it helps you as we go through this. So you ready to write? Let's write down actually what supply really is, okay? Supply is the amount of a good or service that producers are willing and able to sell at a given price. So that means that we're um, thinking about the production side of things. We're not thinking about you and me going out buying things. We're thinking about the farmer growing things, the business or factory owner making goods or services. On a chart, Supply is always um, represented by either a slope upwards um, or a line that's moving um, kind of upwards, right? A positive slope, right? And again, we're thinking about the production side. So I really like this, uh, this picture of like somebody moving barrels, you know, big crates of apples. Like that is definitely the supply side of the apple industry, okay? Pause it if you need to write down the rest of that. And if you wanna sketch out that little supply um, chart, that might help you in a little bit. Let's do demand. Demand is the amount of a good or service that consumers are willing and able to buy at a given price. So demand, usually on a chart, is a negative or a downward slope. And it's usually always marked with a D, D for demand. And remember, on this side, we're thinking about the consumer. So we're not thinking about the person who's like delivering the apples and um, like the apple farmer themselves. We're thinking about you and me with a shopping cart buying things, whether it's online like this picture shows or whether it's actually in a grocery store. We're thinking about the consumer side. What is consumer's demand? And finally, our last word is price. What is price? Price is the amount of money exchanged for a good or service. Remember, we're not just thinking about like things you can hold here, we're thinking about services. So like a ride in a car or a ride sharing app or um, having your clothes dry cleaned or even just what you have to pay to use a laundromat, right? It is the amount of money exchanged for a good or service. And most importantly, price is determined how those, by how supply and demand interact. 
So it's not just a willy nilly decision. Price is actually something that's really thought through when someone um, sets a price for something because it's based on what they're willing and able to buy and sell, both as the produ producer and the consumer. Okay, so what does this actually mean? And why does this even matter? Well, supply and demand can help us an answer a lot of questions about our economy. For example, have you ever wondered why the price of airline tickets like really increase around holidays or in the summer? Like, why does the price just go up suddenly? Or why are oranges and strawberries and other like fruits like that are so expensive in the winter? Well, you can answer those with supply and demand. Like economics that we talked about in our last video, supply and demand are all around us. They're always interacting. For example, you wanna know why so many people are making masks these days or why people are suddenly worried about being able to buy meat in stores or how come hand sanitizer is so expensive? Like all these things are kind of, you know, one thing, hopefully you have some ideas why. Or maybe even why the Nike Dunk Low SPs are coming out soon with three more. Like, I don't know about you, but the Brazil ones look like really fly, right? But why are they doing that? Like, why do they make that decision as a producer? Well, understanding supply and demand can help us understand that. Like, any time a price changes, even something as simple as a gallon of milk or a bag of chips at the store, if you're wondering about that, well, understanding supply and demand help us to anticipate and understand those changes in prices, okay? So let's, let's see what this actually looks like. Okay, I want you to sketch this chart really quickly. You don't have to have the same colors, it doesn't have to look perfect, but I want you to pause it um, in about three seconds. I want you to pause it and take as long as you need to sketch out this chart that I have for you on the screen, okay? So pause in three, two, one, sketch the chart. Okay, so let's talk about this chart. You can see that I put both the supply and the demand on this chart, right? That's usually how it's shown. Supply is that upward sloping line, and it's purple in this case. Okay, do you see it there? Okay. Demand, what color is demand? Yeah, demand is represented by this green line that's going down. Now, more importantly, there's something we haven't looked at yet in the previous slides, and that's this thing called the equilibrium point, the equilibrium price, right? Sometimes you hear point or price. And equilibrium means it's the middle point. It's where things are balanced, right? Like if you are on a balance beam, you might have to lower yourself or put your arms just right to feel balanced. That's what this means, right? Equilibrium is about balance. So basically, that's the point that shows you how much quantity the producer can um, sell and how much demand, how much price and quantity the consumer is willing to buy. It's where they intersect. That's the perfect price and that tells you the amount of item that goes along with it. So you can see on my x-axis I have quantity, so that's quantity of the product or service, and I have price on my y-axis. So all of these things work together. Now I know it's a little confusing, but stick with me, okay, because we're going to refer to this a few times. Okay, I just want you to look at this one. You don't need a sketch. Let's just look. So you can see in this chart, I have two of what line? Yeah, I have two supply lines. We can see there's a red arrow showing me that supply has moved. Supply has kind of increased, right? Maybe that apple farmer tried out a new fertilizer and had a huge bumper crop of apples, more than he expected. Supply has moved in some way, right? Well, you can see that when supply increases, price tends to fall because that new equilibrium price, let me get my pointer out here. The first price that I had when demand and supply were initially like charted is much higher. It's at 30 per 3,000. But now that supply has increased, the price has fallen to just about maybe 21 per 4,000. So it's more quantity, but it's a lower price. Okay, now in a similar way, if supply shifted down for whatever reason, if supply shifted down and the, air, the line is now a third line, right? If that happened, what happens to my price? Let's see, where do they intersect now? Where does the supply and this new orange supply line intersect? Right, up here. Is this a higher price or a lower price? Yes, this is a higher price but it's a lower what? Right, it's a lower quantity. So we can see these things change as supply changes. The price changes as supply changes and how much you can sell.
quantity changes. Okay, let's think about this for demand. Okay, again, just look, don't draw. So in this one, we see a demand one, and we see D2, a demand two. So this chart looks a little different because it doesn't have my actual like numbers for price and quantity. But we can tell here that P2 and Q2 show the new equilibrium point. Supply hasn't changed, but demand did. Maybe more people wanted to buy those dunk lows, right? More people wanted to go see Black Panther when it came out the first time, right? Supply didn't change, but the demand did. So you can see what's happened to price, right? It's gone up, and the quantity has also gone up. Now let's try the other side. What if we have a new curve and the demand has gone down? Then what happens? Where is my new equilibrium point? Right, it's down here. So that means, wow, price really went down and quantity went down too, okay? So I want you to just see that and then we're gonna write it down. Okay, if you need to play those over, go ahead and do it. Let's keep going. Okay, so let's just talk about supply again. Okay, so we see two charts here, one showing an increase in supply and the other showing a decrease in supply. Okay, so I want you to write this down, okay? Write down, if supply increases, price will decrease. Remember, if supply increases, my new equilibrium point is a lower price. So write that down. Now, if supply decreases, my price increases. Good, right, it goes up. So write those two things down. If supply increases, price increases. If supply decreases, price increases. So it has what we call an inverse relationship. They do the opposite things, okay? If you need to pause and keep writing, you're welcome. I'm gonna go on to demand. Demand is a little different. Remember like we looked? If demand increases, right, if the demand line shifts up, price increases. If demand increases, price also goes up. And just like our second graph here, I see the new demand line is lower. If demand decreases, price also decreases. So these have the shared relationship. When one goes up, the other goes up. When one goes down, the other goes down. That's how demand and price work together. So copy down those key things. Demand increase, price increase. Demand decrease, price decrease. And supply increase, price decrease. Good. Supply decreases, what happens to price? Increase. Good, you're doing good. Okay, so one more thing before I hand you over to Ms. Green to practice this in the real world. Usually supply and demand don't move by themselves, right? Usually, you know, your supply line and our previous ones, ones have gone like this and demand, you know, moves around. But usually you get a completely new supply and demand. Usually both of them are moving at the time based on a lot of outside factors. So copy that down. In the real world, usually supply and demand are both moving at the same time based on outside factors. Okay. So I'm gonna kick you to Ms. Green now for our guided practice of this information. And I'm gonna play for you the video she sent us. Here we go. Hi everyone. So let's practice what you guys just learned with Ms. Howard. So Ms. Howard, excuse me, Ms. Howard showed you how supply and demand interact to change price using a graph. Graphs are really helpful because they help us visualize and understand exactly what's happening to the price of a good or service. But we can also think about this outside of a graph. So if you're wondering how a phenomenon is going to affect the price of a good or a service, it's really just common sense. And it's gonna seem pretty obvious once you get the hang of it. You're not always going to need a graph to figure out um, how price is changing if we follow the basic laws of supply and demand that Ms. Howard just introduced to us. So let's go and look at a few examples. So to figure out how supply and demand impact price without using a chart, let's think about a situation that's happening right now in the world. You don't need to write anything down here. I just want you to pay attention because I'm gonna walk you through this first one so you, can, you know how to approach this problem and then you can do some more um, with me afterwards. So here's the situation. 
Okay, so many meat processing plants are closing or having to work with a skeleton crew due to the coronavirus. This means less meat is processed for consumption and some grocery stores are being forced to ration or limit how much meat they sell. So I know that Costco and Kroger are two examples of grocery store chains that are being forced to make these decisions. So in order to determine what's going to happen to the price of meat, I first need to figure out what factor is being affected here. So is supply being affected or is it demand? Well, if less meat is being processed for consumption, then I know that that's a producer side issue. So this is affecting supply, okay? So before I can say how price is going to change though, I need to know how supply is being affected. So is supply going up or is supply going down? Well, since I know that less meat is being processed for consumption, I know that supply is going down. Okay. So what does that tell us about how price is going to change? Can you remember from what Ms. Howard walked you through with the graphs? Will price go up or will price go down? I know that there's a way that I could graph it out and I could move my supply line and then I could plot the new price point and then I could locate the point on the y-axis and then I can see did the price go up and down and yada yada, right? I know I can do all of that. But really there's an easier way to think about it. So let's think about the value of a good or service. When supply goes down, then that means that there's less of that good or service to go around. The good or the service is more scarce than it was before. So what is that going to do to the value of that item? Are goods that are more scarce generally more or less valuable? What do you think? Right, they're, they're more valuable because it's harder to get your hands on that item. So, okay, so if the supply of meat is going down, then what's going to happen to the price of meat as it becomes more scarce? Think about that. Yeah, exactly, the price is going to increase. Yes, great job, y'all. I think that you're really going I think you're really getting it. Okay, let's move to another example. Okay, so let's try this one together. Here's the situation. A late frost in Florida destroys many orange groves. Okay, so I want you guys to write here. So first of all, what's being affected, supply or demand? Pause the video and choose your answer in three, two, one. Okay, are you ready? Good, so again, in this situation, supply is being affected. With the frost destroying the groves, that means that orange farmers can't supply as many oranges to markers and ultimately consu to consumers. So that means that then supply, is, is it going up or is it going down? Right, it's going down. So now, tell me what's happening to price. Pause the video and figure out what's happening to price in three, two, one. Okay, you good? Exactly, so with fewer oranges available to consumers, the oranges are becoming more expensive, the price is going up. Okay, let's try another one. So here's another example for you. Oh, okay, let me read the situation to you. So after news of a new Lakers Nike LeBron 7 surfaced, shoe collectors everywhere took notice. Sweet, so I guess these shoes aren't just for LeBron. I hear they're being released to consumers on May 16th. Okay, so what is going to be affected by the new release of these shoes? Is it gonna be supply or is there gonna be demand? So pause the video in three, two, one. Okay, so what did you say? Great, so this time demand is being impacted. Originally, consumers thought that these were just special shoes only made for LeBron, so they weren't looking to buy them, right? But now they know they can get their hands on a pair, and so they want them. So that means demand is changing. So how is it changing? Is demand going up or is demand going down? Pause the video and decide how demand is changing in three, two, one. Are you ready? Yeah, duh, if consumers want them now, then of course demand is going up. So, duh. So if demand is going up, then what's gonna happen to the price? This is a little different than the last couple of examples we did, but I want you to think about it for a second and see if you can figure it out. I'm pretty confident that you can. So pause the video in three, two, one. Okay, so what did you guys come up with? Yeah, exactly, the price is going up. So before the price of these items was zero because they didn't actually exist for regular consumers. It was only LeBron that had them. But now that they're being made for consumers, people are willing to buy them. So the price is going up. I hear that they're gonna be sold for $200. Okay, so let's do one final example, and then we'll move on to our quick quiz. Ready? Okay, so here's the final situation. These days, fewer Americans have enough money to buy their own homes. 
So which factor is being impacted? Is it supply or is it demand? Pause the video in three, two, one. Okay, got it? Right, so this time demand is being affected as well. People have less money, so their demand for buying houses is changing. Is it changing how? how is it going up, is it going down? Pause the video in three, two, one. Okay, ready? Yeah, exactly, the demand for houses is going down. Maybe people are renting more now instead of buying. So if demand is going down, then what's happening to the price? Go ahead and pause the video in three, two, one. Okay, ready? Right, so since the demand went down, the price is also going down. With the lower price, that might then encourage people to reconsider buying, and then eventually the price is going to go back up, but initially the price will fall. All right, nice work, guys. I think we're ready for our quick quiz now. Before we do that, though, let's just quickly revisit our goal for today. Okay, so our goal was to identify whether the scenario indicates a change in supply or demand and describe what will happen to price. Okay, so let's see how we do on our quick quiz. All right, you ready to get started? If you're not feeling ready, it's okay. You can go back and you can rewatch parts of the video before moving on. But if you are ready, great, let's get started. Okay, so our first question. As people are stuck inside under stay-at-home orders, less cars are on the road and fewer planes are in the air, which is causing a dramatic drop in oil prices. So what is changing to cause the drop in prices? Okay, so is supply going up or is demand going up? Is supply going down or is demand going down? Okay, so pause the video and answer the question in three, two, one. Okay, did you figure it out? So first you had to decide what factor was being affected. Is it supply or was it demand? Then you had to decide how that factor was changing, whether it was increasing or decreasing. Okay, so we know that price went down and that consumers were the ones changing their behavior. So therefore we know that this was a result of demand and demand was decreasing, okay? So this was the best answer here. Okay, so let's do the next one, ready? All right. Okay, so our question here. The US imports a lot of its fruit from other countries. With the COVID-19 pandemic, however, foreign fruit retailers are having a harder time shipping their goods. As a result, US consumers might see fewer options and higher prices. Why? Is it because supply is going up, demand is going up, Supply is going down or demand is going down, okay? So pause the video, reread the question on your own, and then choose the best answer in three, two, one. Okay, are you ready? So it looks like this is an issue on the producer side. So I know that it's going to be a change in supply. What happened to price again? Oh, right, price went up. So I know what direction supply moved in, right? Supply must have gone down if the price went up. Perfect, okay, we're ready for our final question. Okay, last question. All right, so as people are looking for ways to entertain themselves at home, a new Nintendo Switch, or excuse me, new Nintendo Switches are out of stock almost everywhere. As a result, the price of used Switches has increased substantially. So what's causing the change in price of a used Nintendo Switch? Okay, so go ahead and answer the question in three, two, one. Ready? Right, so this is consumers changing their behaviors, right? They can't get a new Switch, so instead they opt for a used one. That means that their demand for used Switches is going up. Great work, everyone. Before I sign out and give you back to Ms. Howard, let's talk about our mission. Okay, so as always, we wanna know how we can apply this stuff to our own lives. It always goes back to why should we care about any of this stuff? Like Ms. Howard pointed out earlier in this video, understanding how supply and demand interact to affect price is really important for us as consumers. Don't you wanna know how to get the best deal on flights or when to buy a new phone? I know I do. Well, now that we know how supply and demand interact to change prices, we know that it's best to buy plane tickets when demand is low, and maybe a good time to buy a new phone is when a new model has just been released. That way we can get a slightly older version at a lower price as a result of changing demand. Knowing this stuff can definitely help us be smart consumers and save money. 
It's also important to know this stuff because it can help us navigate some of the uncertainty of our current economy. Your mission this week is to analyze charts and graphs like this one on the right side of the page in order to describe how the COVID-19 pandemic has affected the prices of goods and services. To access this mission, remember that you go to this week's day four learning plan on the RPS at home site. And last but not least, just wanted to remind you guys that you can follow us on Twitter at RPS Civics at Home, or you can email us at cgreen8 at rbaschools.net to share your missions. This week's shout outs go to Zoe B and Janique H. These ladies did a fantastic job following along with the videos and completing their missions. If you're someone who's watching and completing the missions too, please send them our way. We'd love to see the excellent work you're doing from home, and we want to give you a shout out for your efforts. Thank you all for following along with me today. That is all from me. Bye, everyone. Awesome. Thanks, Miss Green. So I'm here to close this out for the day. I really appreciate her kind of walking us through um, all of how it really works besides just the charts. And I know we had started today with saying the price is right, but, you know, especially on the TV show. But as you find out, it kind of depends, right? The price is different in most places and successes on the show are usually always wrong. This is true. Um, but now you know exactly why things are priced the way they are, or you'll be able to explain like why price has gone up or down given um, supplier demand. So hopefully today you are able to kind of um, get a sense for how these things work and see these in your daily life. And I, I really hope that you enjoyed today's lesson. Ms. Green and I are really looking forward to see um, your work so we can shout out more students. So give us a shout out when you're ready and have a great week. Bye.